Hey, hi Raj. Welcome to the Curious Show. Thank you for coming on, man. Hey Rana, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me and uh, excited for this uh, format. Uh, I think we have been discussing what new things you are trying out. Yeah. So excited for the uh, new kind of podcast uh, that people haven't seen yet. Yeah, yeah. And and since you mentioned for everyone listening in, this is sort of like a new thing I'm experimenting with, sort of like. a show and tell for a product uh, in the form of a podcast i know a lot of people are very interested in hr tech products and uh, you know to to understand the product you have to look at the website or reach out for sales but not everybody is looking to buy they just looking to explore so i thought hey you know i why don't we ask founders to just come on talk about the product and maybe in just show and tell kind of so that's how this format is going to be it's going to be a little different uh but excited uh, episode 1 with you with you raj uh, so raj before we begin uh, uh, why don't you just tell everyone listening in who is raj and what has raj been up to yeah sure i think uh, if i start from the beginning uh, i am a techie by profession uh, i graduated from triple it hyderabad and uh, started my career with browser stack uh, stayed there for roughly 3 3 and a half years uh then moved to bangalore uh, with a company called harness uh, so there also worked one one and a half years uh and then now yes we uh, launched a product in rec- uh, recruitment space and we help companies sort of streamline their recruitment activities uh, multiple products into the space solving multiple problems in the industry uh the core insight which with with which we started was primarily that uh a lot of things are done manually in recruitment uh, even with the top notch ats and uh, top notch tools which are there uh, the adoption of these tools are not as much as the product owner would want it to be uh, so yeah, that was the core insight and once i started there were a lot more problems to solve uh, not just that so yeah building a lot of things there interesting raj but uh... and and i can resonate starting in recruitment i myself did so but I'm just curious uh, like why like what was the problem that you faced or was the inflection point that made you quit and start up in this particular space given that you you you're not from the let's say the traditional hr background correct 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 yeah so i think uh, both of these companies that uh, i was working with both of these had like the top notch ats is so i was closely involved into the recruitment activities as a interviewer Uh, in both of these uh, companies, and uh, to give you one example, right? Let's say you are organizing a hiring drive. Now, mm-hmm. a hiring drive might have say three rounds that are supposed to happen on a single day, and there might be fifty candidates, hundred candidates coming in, and there are only probably say two recruiters who are managing all of these things. Mm-hmm. Now, if you think about from the candidate's experience, right? A lot of times, what happens is the candidate is just not aware that what's my next step. Right, they are just sitting there, and recruiter would probably spot them that okay, this person next round we have to schedule and so on. So it's just like this is just a hiring drive example. But then in general, if you see uh, a lot of things are happening on spreadsheets, a lot of things are happening on ATS, a lot of things are happening on WhatsApp. Uh, multiple stakeholders are involved, so it's not just the recruiter who's uh, doing all the job. Uh, it's also hiring manager, interviewer, recruitment agencies. probably someone who's leading the ta function is overseeing all of these things right so uh, a lot of the, these things need streamlining as well as not just in terms of the experience of a particular stakeholder but also in terms of uh, the experience that every stakeholder has right so if you think about say recruiter right so recruiter needs to know that when they come to office what what are some of the activities that they need to do uh when hiring manager logs in the hiring manager needs to know that okay these are my activities that i need to do and uh the problem does not stop at this level uh problem also starts with uh let's say you have like these activities happening if this is not centralized then you don't have enough data to actually understand what kind of things are happening on the ground right so for example let's say uh can you tell me that how many panels are taking one particular interview right this is something that uh as an interviewer i have faced that recruiters might get a bias to assign interviews based on who is giving me feedback sooner right so these kind of things are not even coming up to the management to understand that these are the problems happening on the ground right and these are things which are actually burning time for the interviewer as well as let's say a lot of such insights for example let's say uh, a recruiter is sourcing a lot of profiles but then uh the screening stage is taking the most time so let's say the hiring manager is not approving your uh 
uh, resume to go towards the interview or not right so these kind of things are not even tracked right so it's just like the recruiter is always running behind the hiring manager the hiring manager says that i'm busy so if you have this number that you have a tat of 40 days out of which 5 days are probably going in just waiting for the uh, hiring manager to approve right so these are the insights which the ta heads need to get and then basically act on it right if you don't even have this in a single place you don't have the power to actually get these insights in place right uh, mm-hmm. so yeah, uh, as i said uh, recruitment is a mess so uh, a lot of things to solve <laughs> yeah yeah true i mean uh, it's interesting like this is that one problem uh, at least when when i talk with my friends we keep saying that we have a cracks recruitment recruitment right properly correct uh, correct that's, that's that's like a billion dollar company waiting to happen right these levers and all these companies have just come and made things better uh, correct correct i think it's truly solved i think um, i'll just refer on one thing that you said raj you spoke of screening right um, today and and from experience i know the 80 20 time probably takes right and the biggest bottleneck is that screening right where um, you are uh, you have to go through either you inundated with profiles you can't go through possibly cannot go through so many so you end up losing a bunch of people who actually would have made the cut right or correct screening who's not uh, adept uh, at screening right um, is that like a problem that you thought you know worth solving yeah yeah so this is one of the recent problems that we targeted uh, i'll tell you like the problem is such multifold not just at recruiter level uh, let's say you have a job posting you post today as a senior software engineer in, in your organization uh, you would receive 1000 applications this is for a organization which is not even having a good employer branding for example right this is just the designation itself there is enough supply that would just hit on that easy apply button and flow in your funnel now none of the job boards are stopping you to apply right so every job board works on the distribution so every job board wants you to apply uh, and increase the sort of inflow right so what happens here is the recruiter's job has increased now either the recruiter offloads this to a tool and then gives some sort of recommendations on these are the uh, candidates that you should process or what a recruiter usually does is there are three kinds of models which are there in the market uh, one is Uh, a recruiter is very hard working person and they'll probably see all of these 1000 applications manually one at a time and uh, i am you'll be surprised a lot of people say that they do actually so uh, and uh, there is a, there is one of the job boards which also shows uh, how many profiles have been viewed out of the total so if there are 10000 applications that job board also also shows that recruiter has reviewed 700 profiles so there we have seen people actually reviewing 4000 applications so so uh, so the problem is there right so one is uh, one is that kind of recruiter is actually going through all of these uh, resumes another is slightly smarter they are like okay we'll see 100 profiles we'll try to interview them close uh, someone and sort of wait for that to happen if this does not happen we'll go to the 900 which are left and then probably try our luck again right uh, but this is still sort of losing out on good candidates as you said that 900 might have some good profile which is sort of acing all of these 100 right so you the recruiter didn't even open this sort of uh, resume so the candidate didn't even have a chance to get into the funnel of recruiter right so this is another problem that uh, the candidate is not even aware of this thing happening at the recruiter end if you ask a lot of candidates today that how do they apply almost most of the, them would be saying that job boards are career page not a lot of people have that much yeah. connections to uh, actually get referrals or probably know someone in the recruitment team and then reach out to these as a warm lead right so uh, if that is the case and if recruiters are not even opening the resume then there is a big gap in terms of an opportunity uh, being presented to the candidate as well as the candidate being presented to the opportunity right uh, this is the second kind of recruiter model and the third third is the most interesting one most of the recruiters are not even looking at the career page resumes this is like mm. this is like so uh, deep in terms of so much value lost right uh, they are saying that okay if there are 1000 applications i might as well do my outbound hiring i might as well hire an agency and get uh, mm. a good person in or i might as well give more amount uh, sort of rewards to my internal employees to give like more Uh, qualified referrals basically right 
but what's happening here is one is cost to hire is increasing so cost to hire is basically if you are paying your referral bonus if you are paying your agencies a percentage of the ctc that goes up regardless of you having these thousand sort of resumes just lying around there you didn't even use those thousand resumes now of course i agree that thousand might have only 50 people who are even relevant to look at right but then if someone solves that 50 problem then you would actually look at those 50 right correct, uh, correct. so yeah multiple problems there uh, got it and and no it's uh, you're right like while you're saying i was just thinking through uh, we've had a similar sort of i won't say it's a good problem to have but there's so many applications <laughs> that's come in uh, but yes, the recruiter gets inundated and they're like, I can't go through so many. There was in fact thousand actually plus, right? And like, I possibly can't do this. Uh, uh, we tried various hacks and all of that. Obviously we didn't really use a tool. Um, Correct. You know, we tried whatever you can do on Excel, but at the end of the day, you can't, you have to sort of open a, uh, go through it one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, okay. I'm curious Raj, and given our current format of this, uh, I understand, you know, you actually are trying to solve this, right? And you've probably been even managed to solve this to some extent. Um, do you want to talk about it, show it? Yeah, yeah definitely. I think I can share my screen and uh, show you. So we actually uh, built a tool basically to solve this problem, to highlight the deserving candidates uh, on the top. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. So currently I'm on Greenhouse. Greenhouse is one of the top ATSs. Uh, we currently have integrations with them, but I'll just cover the context in terms of what we are trying to look at. Uh, so these are the candidates uh, roughly. This is a demo account, so uh, don't worry about the numbers and other things. But these are, uh, let's say there are 50 applicants here. In actual accounts, there might be 1,000 as you mentioned. Now, uh, one way to review these applications is that uh, every tool has some way or the other to actually review all of these resumes one at a time right so here in this you can probably reject or advance this and move this uh, another thing which i want to point out to candidates who are watching your uh, this thing a lot of candidates fall for these tricks where they say that okay make your AT ats friendly resume with this particular mm -hmm. tool right uh, i can probably roughly give you a number that mostly 70 to 80 percent of the organizations in india are not even having such scoring, right? A lot of ATSs do have a scoring in place, but most of the resumes that you are sending is actually getting rejected by a recruiter who is manually reviewing your resume. So uh, other than just optimizing... Uh, sorry, I'm thinking, uh, just double clicking there. Uh, this is a very interesting point because this is one of those top ones which come in all LinkedIn posts and I've been guilty of making this. But for everyone listening here, and since you clearly know this very well, uh, what sort of the algorithm do you think that generally these ATSs do? That, uh, Correct. So, make it uh, friendly? yeah, so I think uh, every ATS has, it's a very simple problem. This is way before OpenAI came into existence. A lot of ATSs already had uh, this uh, sort of functionality where uh, they would parse this text, which is just a text, uh, not a PDF format and the same with the job description and try to match the number of words. That's where all of these influencers and other people came into picture where they would try to optimize for those that, okay, put in, sprinkle some more words of this, uh, put your skills like this. Uh, th there's one more very interesting post, which I came across last month or so, uh, where uh, this might uh, hurt the recruiters, but then I'll still uh, say it out loud. Uh, but then these resumes basically what candidates also like the smarter candidates what they do is they put white text here like this is white and uh, they put white uh, text here uh, so regardless of they knowing let's say this is a java position and they don't know java so they would not openly lie here that this is i know java they would probably put java here and they'll still write python and everything just to hack their screening chances basically right this is not uh, i would not recommend doing this <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> It's just silly, right? I mean, you, you get it, you get eyeball, but then what's the point? The recruiter is not going to... Yeah, it, it's very silly. Like, it's not even just that, right? It, that is still sort of advanced, sort of not a lot of uh, candidates would be doing this. Uh, why do you think fresher supply to engineering manager positions, right? It's as silly as that, right? Uh, a recruiter would get your resume in your uh, funnel, but then he's not going to give you at least one interview also, not even the intro call, right? It's just they trying their luck, saying that, okay, probably... Let's get a call and let's see if they have an open position. Let's see if 
this works out right so that that's where the main problem comes right that the job boards are not stopping you to apply so job boards want okay you find a job you apply to the job right we have another product which we'll probably ignore for this uh, session but then that is what it solves in a way right where uh, like the relevant candidates can only apply if they they don't even have the skills or experience they do not even come to your recruiters funnel right uh, but yeah coming back any questions on this no 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 please carry on but this was this was a good riff uh, for people listening here like it's so basically to summarize what you said it's the number of words it's just a very crude algorithm where just taking the number of words and matching it with what the job description is and whichever has most number of matches you assume to sort of rank on top right and that's what correct correct okay. yeah just sprinkle the words that's the only thing that a software and the software doesn't even understand the pdf if you give a pdf and another pdf it will eventually convert it to a uh, text and then compare that's the only thing that it has right Uh, so as i was saying uh, these are the resumes and you will probably do this mon- multiple times 1000 times or 200 and then leave the other 900 uh, but this is the process across any tool right uh, even if you are doing a google form you are going to do the same thing even if you are doing with any atss you are going to do this uh, and a lot of atss do have some sort of score but that score mostly in the industry recruiters are not trusting because they are also aware that this is not uh, actually accurate based on my requirements right so of course there is some accuracy problem as well in these uh, tools but then uh, yeah that's the core problem that we are trying to solve now what happens in this is uh, the deserving candidates are not getting the right uh, sort of visibility that they deserve right so let's let's see a world where rexy screeno comes in uh, rexy screeno is basically a tool which helps companies sort of discover the top talent a bit more easily than uh, whatever they are doing right now uh what we do is you just have to upload your resume i'll show you the manual workflow first uh let's say you roll out a google form on linkedin saying that i am hiring for a senior software engineer position you received 100 applications uh in those 100 applications you just upload these resumes what we'll do is uh, automatically tag all of these resumes into these tags right and we are working on more tags like this what these tags says these are candidate traits now these traits don't change over time usually so for example if someone has won a hackathon you will assign that a tag uh, if someone has published research papers you assign a tag uh, if someone has made open source contribution so these are actually going uh, to the github profile that they have linked in their uh, resume and then getting those information this is not just resume so this most of the recruiters are not even doing or not even as qualified to actually do right so if you are doing this for 1000 you cannot expect a recruiter to actually do this right yeah. uh, this this usually comes at the hiring manager stage where hiring manager actually goes to the uh, github and realizes that okay this is the candidate who has done and this by the way does not rely on the resume text i can in the resume i can say that i am an open source contributor but who's going to validate it right so that's why we sort of actually go to github and realize if that is uh, true and uh, there are multiple sort of checks and other things that we have put in place uh, for example a lot of uh let me just go to it for But, this uh, one question uh, so this tags sure. are customizable let's say by companies or it's defined by you correct so most of these tags have a, spe- a specific pattern so we actually uh, like when we do our sales calls we actually understand the requirement of these tags and if there are any custom tags which people want we definitely evaluate that and build those things for example say a top institute a lot of people might think that uh, let's say uh, ramaya in bangalore is top institute for them right but a lot of companies would be like okay iits nits and triple it is the only thing that i want so all of those customizations we help them do based on their requirements uh, in terms of new tags altogether we do sort of evaluate the use case and then build in case uh, that is something that brings value understood right uh as i was saying on the github side uh, sorry this is a demo okay let anyways this is my github uh, so uh, here basically a lot of recruiters stop at this saying that okay there is lot of green here they must have contributed to open source but this does not actually say it's open source this is just you creating a your own code repository on github also gives you this green so recruiters don't know all of these things so if you push the work that is not supposed to be done by recruiter to recruiter then issues like this would happen right so uh, what we actually uh, validate is have they actually contributed to open source organizations uh, and the quality of those contributions as well 
right? So that's how all of these tags are automatically uh, defined. And uh, the same with top competitive programmer also. This is DSA interviews that a lot of companies ask uh, in their uh, interview. So we actually go to the links that they have linked in their resume. For example, Lead Code, Code Forces, Code Chef. These are some of the websites that which most of the candidates have solved problems on. Uh, so we actually sort of go to these websites and figure out if they have done meaningful uh, number of problems and the contest rating and other things, right? And same with top companies. So top companies, basically, we are also planning to launch one more tag, which is going to uh, cater to like service businesses also. Uh, but this primarily uh, sort of uh, caters to like uh, top product companies in India based on, let's say, uh, Postman, Hotstar and so on and so forth. Right. So, and this list is also customizable by the way. So uh, that helps with the uh, companies. Now with these tags is the problem that we started with solved, right? So what we do is uh, for the recruiter, it would be like, let's say hundred candidates here. It's as simple as sorting by tags. So it's like you just process the top ones first and then of course go to this because this might not have enough liquidity, right? So you, you might have to sort of still see other resumes. But now the recruiter is actually prioritizing an, a funnel which was completely ignored or not efficiently processed, right? Uh, any questions on this part? Nope, nope. Clear, clear so far. Sounds good. Sounds good. And another thing, another feedback which we received from a lot of recruiters was that, uh, okay, this is fine, but there might be a fresher who has these tags. Uh, the uh, mm -hmm. top company might be coming from a, a internship and these things are anyways uh, doable by them. Uh, so how do I sort of still not prioritize that person, right? Because uh, if I'm hiring an engineering manager, this is not even helping me. So that's why what we do is we also get the graduation year and post graduation year here. So whatever resume uh, text we have sort of uh, analyzed, we get these graduation year and post graduation year. And then you can filter based on that. Okay, I only want candidates from 2014 to 2020, for example, right? Uh, why we do that is like, I can probably open this resume and uh, parse the text from here saying that, okay, this is a uh, four years experience candidate, right? Uh, this, this candidate has written seven years experience. After two years, this resume is going to still stick around in your ADS. And you will still say this person is seven years of experience. But what does not change is the graduation year, right? So graduation year is sort of a better metric. Of course, there might be like career gaps and other things which you still have to handle, but then this just is more accurate than relying on the text of the resume and it does not get stale basically, right? Uh, so so you any- You to figure out grad and post-grad or you're taking- Correct. Grad? No, both, grad, grad and post-grad both. Okay. In, in these uh, samples, it's not there, but it shows up here itself. Got it. Right. Uh, yeah. So this is the manual workflow, right? Almost always recruiters would be using some ADS. Uh, so I'll show you the workflow with greenhouse. So let's say greenhouse is the ADS that the company is using. They have these candidates. Now we cannot ask the recruiter that, okay, go ahead, download all the resumes, upload that resume and screen off, get the tags and then sort of process those candidates, right? That's still increasing the workload of the recruiter, right? So what we did is we built an in integration with Greenhouse. Uh, by the way, we officially integrated with Greenhouse yesterday. So good that we are doing the podcast today. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we were officially integrated with Lever last week, but then, uh, yeah. So uh, in the Greenhouse side, these jobs are actually fetched from Greenhouse. So you choose which candidates you want to tag in, right? So for example, let's say we selected the software engineer job. And you can also select which stage the candidates should be tagged on. If let's say a candidate has already uh, been interviewing, uh, you already know that it's a shortlisted candidate, for example, right? So you don't even have to select those candidates. You can just say that, okay, just tag the application review ones. And the same with source as well. So you might be trusting your other sources better than say LinkedIn uh, posting. So you'll probably just select this and uh, submit this. So what happens with this is, it's just within seconds, what it will do is actually get resumes from Greenhouse, tag all of them here. Uh, in this, we have already tagged for the demo purpose, but I'll show you the value, end value that the uh, user gets. So th this is again on Greenhouse. Greenhouse has a feature of tags. So now against every candidate, these tags are populated. 
this is without even the recruiter opening any resume out of those thousand so let's say a, a recruiter wants to process only top company ones the recruiter just needs to go to greenhouse uh, go to profile details uh, and this is the filters page and you can just select say top company uh, tag so this will just list all the candidates with the top company tag let's say there are 1000 out of which probably 20 people might be in top company just process those first and then go to your next one right and every company has a different requirement so some people might be weighing on open source enthusiast a bit more some people might be like i want only tier 1 candidates from tier 1 colleges so all of those things you can uh, get directly on greenhouse right uh, any okay. questions on this part no so uh, so the tags are coming back and i'm assuming these apis are with most of the atss today in the market uh, unfortunately not uh, the ats needs to be open to new integrations so greenhouse and lever are acha uh, other they have open uh, okay not open they are mostly paid apis yeah, yeah so paid as, or they as don't as have as api at all hmm. so as long as there is an api uh, the integration is possible right obviously correct correct and as long as they actually want us to come so <laughs> so it's the both uh, both ways not just the uh, so there yeah <laughs> api being open uh, and the same thing is also reflected in the uh, profile page of this uh, ats so uh, here as you see let's say a hiring manager is looking at this profile uh, currently hiring manager can only see this resume that's the only source of truth that the hiring manager has but now the hiring manager can see that okay these people are uh, with these tags and based on that we are shortlisting right uh, on the second part we also have a graduation year right so greenhouse has a concept of uh, custom fields so you can define these custom fields and if you just select the graduation year as your custom field you can actually search for 2013 to 2020 and once you do this it will show all the candidates matching that let's just remove this if we get more for example this right so all of these candidates are in this graduation year range so this does not even get your freshers or any people who have just randomly clicked on apply without reading the job description right okay. uh, and of course you put more tags on top of this to uh, like short uh, make it more narrower got it got it what about right. skills and all these things are you looking into that also correct we we do have the skills just that we don't want to give a tag to it because it sort of will get very cluttered because skills are usually people write 20 skills in the uh, resume so mm -hmm. all of these would be here mostly what happens is the uh, the ats itself has a search here so for example here in greenhouse it has a search here which can just search for let's say java here so it will sort of search in this particular uh, funnel what we do is in case the ats is not supporting such searches we also have our own boolean search here in the uh, screen or dashboard itself so i can do something like say react and uh, mumbai or bengaluru so this would give candidates who have written react in their resume and written mumbai or bangalore in the uh, resume text basic so this is actually boolean searching inside the resume text right so if you have very niche requirements let's say you are hiring in crypto and other uh, domains you can probably do such sort of filtering that okay if i'm hiring only for fintech probably search for those firms or keywords there got it but uh, uh, raj uh, this curious this is non tool uh, how did this idea come about that hey i'll do tags right uh, how, how i'm mean, just curious about how this came about yeah i think uh, like as i said right we have multiple products uh, into the recruitment space this is sort of a discovery in terms of the problem first uh, that there's no questions or nobody no recruiter would tell me that this is not a problem right unless they are actually working in a very small organization they'll say that this is a problem right in terms of tags primarily it came directly with the uh, thought process that what does a recruiter actually look at in a resume right uh, if you ask this, you will find two core things that they look at. One is experience, one is education. Education, not all of them, but experience is sort of the topmost thing that either they'll see the company name or they'll see Java written somewhere and they'll probably uh, shortlist this person, right? Mm -hmm. And why tags is basically these are more qualitative in nature, right? Uh, if I give you a, a random score, uh, a recruiter might 
content that saying that okay this is not 85 this is 75 for me right and it's subjective also based on who is reviewing probably hiring manager might understand a bit more from the resume and probably rate it higher and so on we we'll, we are still going to do a score here but then uh, just sort of uh, letting you know that the tags is more accurate like when i say someone is an open source enthusiast almost 95% of the times he is an open source enthusiast we have done this activity for 1000 resumes so we can safely say that number uh, but then yeah that's the goal that we need to be more accurate to make trust with the recruiter saying that i can trust this tag and this is going to be accurate and then maybe push them to filtering based on this got right. it so uh, this is one side of the problem you said um, and and like you rightly said there's two things right one is your experience when i look at it i'm looking at the experience and looking at uh, the education right education is like a filter to get into it uh, but Correct. a filter to even move ahead experience is where the fitment and all of those things i look at it right uh, how's so rexy is not uh, sorry uh, screeno is not solving for the skills part yet right it's it's giving you everything sort of the other things other than skills right the experience what so you're saying uh, you are expecting tags of skills here correct something around those lines Pro- yeah probably or uh, so so typically see this uh, i'm looking at the education and these other things right which as i said entry so education and all that is an entry right years of experience correct. is an entry barrier Uh, once Correct. I cross that, then I'm looking at the work that that person has done, right? Right. Now, those those once they are validated, then the last one is okay. What what gives that person an edge, right? So a Correct. company is always an edge. A bunch of other things that the person has done is an edge, right? Like, like Correct. Like somebody is a open source enthusiast who's done massive GitHub commits and all of that, right? That's clear edge. Correct. Right? Uh, Correct. Uh, uh, I'm just again, I'm not critiquing, uh, right? I'm just saying. Uh, no, no, I understand. how you solving the experience match kind of correct i think uh, that's a really good question uh, a simple answer to that is we still don't want to take recruiters jobs uh, and yeah. we still want to sort of <laughs> uh, yeah you're right uh, we still yeah. we still think that it's not a tool problem there right uh, you cannot uh, take away that job from the recruiter because the recruiter is much more well versed in terms of the requirements right you can still build a random ai on top of it saying that okay just ask me some random question and we'll probably find some candidates based on matching that requirement right so that level of part this is more for a noise removal kind of thing we do not say that okay if this person has four tags go ahead and hire that person right uh, so that's the idea behind this first yeah correct correct when i'm doing about 2000 about correct. 500 correct if this is giving me i'll go buy this um what i would love also is some sort of like you said uh, not score uh, score is a dirty word a uh, matching <laughs> with okay i have got let's say 10 things correct uh, how close is the eight things five things six things to my experience correct. also but yeah even if so even if a tool gives me everything as a recruiter and other recruiters will still open it and still open correct. and bet right that day right, right. i don't see it any time in the future where they just click a button and automatically it happens yeah i am a strong believer of that by the way uh ki recruiters are not recruiter jobs are not going to go away for sure like they they can just be enabled with more tools but it's just so much uh, sort of chaos and things to deal with uh, for an ai to understand but uh, since you mentioned it raj uh, what's the 80 20 problem here like why is this such a problematic space what's the from first principles what's the problem uh, do you do you have any sense uh, on the uh, screening side of things or in recruitment yeah. in general it's just the whole recruit uh, let's say let's just say even the sc- matching matching part of things one of the big problems i think the entire point of recruitment is i match right uh, and then you look at culture fitment this that salary and all of those things but just matching okay. itself is insanely <laughs> difficult today Uh, correct okay where where do you see the problem still today yeah i think the bigger problem has now uh, become at least in india is that the uh, economic situation is such that there's lot more supply than demand right? there's not enough jobs for uh, people than the number of candidates who are out of job 
uh, and you must have heard a lot of senior folks not getting that pay as like what they used to get and they are not able to switch and so on right so this just sort of increases the problem much more right that the inflow of candidates is just going to keep on coming and the recruiters are uh, again the same problem with recruiters also recruiters are also not paid as much to actually work so much right so then uh, at some point in time you will have to outsource this either to an agency uh, or sort of define some metrics based on which you can approximate this right uh, as i said the, these candidates might not even get to the offer stage this person might get to the offer stage but then mm. at some point in time you need to go ahead with an approximation and then sort of improvise from there right you cannot say that no i want to see 1000 applications only then i'll be confident that i'm processing the right candidates right because they are also optimizing for the time right mm. okay fair enough uh, by the way I, i missed asking one question so this is um, integrated with ats uh, what about uh, a lot of companies don't have an ats uh, they just get it on forms or sheets uh, does that is there a way for them to work on this yeah so as i said earlier manual is the only way we are planning to integrate with google spreadsheets uh, we are still in the feasibility discussion uh, but yeah we we want to sort of get to that once we have solved the ats side of things because uh, solving the form side of thing is sort of easy but solving the product market fit for the ats integration is slightly harder this is what we are trying to get to first but then of course we'll be able to evaluate that as well to sort of support uh younger companies who are not actually affording uh, an ats and so on right uh, so yeah okay and if i'm guessing the volume of problem uh with somebody who has a greenhouse is like probably 100x than Correct. somebody who can't afford a greenhouse i mean that's a filter in itself okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so that uh, that's how we de- define our icp so uh yeah. if okay. they don't even have that problem then why are we even reaching out to them Correct, correct. Yeah, that's, that's right. a great idea actually. If you if you can afford a lever at a greenhouse, then you've got a hiring problem for sure. Correct, correct. <laughs> Because you have that much employer branding where you need such tool, and then you have bought that and so on. Got it. Um, and uh, uh, you mentioned uh, I I didn't want to interrupt while you were talking. Uh, you mentioned about this problem today with ATSs that ATSs are open uh, open gate communities, right? You come, you apply. right uh, you mentioned that you have a product which solves for that uh, do you want to quickly talk about that uh, what is it if you don't have time to show that's fine do you want to talk about yeah it? i think i can show it uh, let's see i haven't prepared for it but that's the fun uh, so yeah so what we do is uh, i'll probably log out and show it so this is the job listing right uh, we are very early in this it's almost like a talent marketplace let's say for like a linkedin or an indeed uh, what we do differently is we have these mandatory requirements here so these mandatory requirements are let's say uh, for this particular uh, company nlp is required machine learning is required python is required and experience 2 to 4 range is required so what we do is we actually ask candidates to create profiles on our platform we roughly have 55000 candidates now here uh, and we are working with multiple companies as well here so when the uh, candidate signs up uh, they basically have almost like a resume kind of screen what this does is uh, of course you capture the details about the candidate the preferences and so on and so forth uh, this creates a public profile page which people can probably share uh, if they are confident on the scores and other things now you see these skills these skills are the regzi verified skills so these are done after they have taken an assessment on these skills so we have like a very uh, noise removal kind of assessment of, again we don't say that if someone has passed our python assessment go ahead and hire that person as a python developer right so mm-hmm. this is still for noise removal we don't want to like take away opportunities from candidates uh, but this ensures that if someone has never worked with python they would not be able to pass this uh, sort of assessment right once you have this profile in pay, uh, place uh, what you can do is you can still apply to these jobs but you need to pass all my requirements so you see javascript and react assessments i have passed css i haven't passed and i am not in my 4 to 6 years uh, experience requirement i cannot even click on apply here right uh, but there are organizations where for example these are four sort of uh, green ticks so i can apply here 
So now the company is getting only the candidates who should actually come in their funnel, right? Of course, there's a liquidity problem here. So let's say LinkedIn or Indeed is at hundreds of millions of candidates. Uh, if we have 55,000, uh, there might be very few people who are interested in Hyderabad. There might be very few people who are passing these assessments. There might be very few people who would match this. And that's why the recruiters might not even get, let's say, 10 applicants. But then at scale, this sort of uh, works on the problem that it's uh, sort of trying to solve. Got it. So uh, let's say, let's say this uh, one X company, right, they're hiring and they come here, they open the position, right, on, on the Rexy platform, the Talent Hub platform. And then this okay. link is where I, I can go ahead and let's say on, on my LinkedIn, right, I say, hey, apply here. And I give the link. I click the link Correct. as a candidate. I come here, right? And then Correct. I have to now mandatorily go through, make my profile and vet. Right? Correct. Uh, Correct. Correct. Now, here's the it's thing. It's slightly harder. Yeah, I'll, I'll sort of, uh, uh, what do I say, use my... HR head. Uh, uh, that's that's a lot of friction now. On one way, I can clearly see benefits, right? At scale, um, and also if the company is exclusively using this, because then if I have to apply, I have to apply here, right? Um, Correct. But also, there are a lot who won't, right? Uh, Correct. And, Correct. And, and the companies are okay with losing that. Yeah, I think uh, this is. This is something that we have heard so much. Uh, I think that is why these assessments are quick 5-10 minute assessments. That is one of the reasons why we don't say that, okay, you have to actually take two hours. Uh, this is from the learning that people don't want to take assessments, especially at a senior level, which is, let's say, five years experience. They might not even come to this platform, basically. right? Uh, so there are multiple challenges here, as I discussed. Uh, one is also some candidate might miss out on this assessment by, say, one or two questions, but they actually might be good. Right. Uh, so there are multiple problems here. We are still sort of solving a lot of things here. Uh, but as you said, increasing fric friction is not necessarily bad. Right. Uh, a lot of times, of course, you ask them if you ask them to sign up and other thing. A lot of ATSs right now have uh, a sign up uh, experience yeah. instead of like a form. You have to actually sign up on their platform and then you can reuse for all the people who use that ATS. But then, uh, as I said, it's not necessarily bad. You just have to strike that balance that how much is bad and how much is so we are evaluating multiple things like for example one is this quick apply other is you can probably uh, still sort of say that i am interested kind of uh, button now the recruiter side you can probably just see the quick apply ones first and then probably see the candidates who are uh, in the interested one categories so there are multiple uh, issues here as i uh, as you also mentioned uh, but yeah uh, this is one of the ways in which we were trying to solve and from this we sort of get to screen out that okay we can if we, if we can plug it with their existing flow itself uh, we probably don't need to bring them into a completely different talent marketplace get the candidates to sign up uh, and so on right uh, so, yeah. correct no um, you're right like uh, i remember like back when i was at Davin box uh, through Davin ats those were Two, two things, right? One quick apply and one where you need to sign up. And I remember Correct. Davin had a mandatory, they rolled out a feature of uh, mandatory sign up. Uh, and a lot of companies just revolted, you know, clients. Correct. Uh, uh, they were like, no, no, no. And I tried to explain to them that, look, it's a good thing. Uh, it's a good Correct. thing that you're making people sign up because that means there's high intent, right? Even when back when I was applying for jobs, uh, the re companies that really wanted to apply, I, went, I did all of that, like, I remember GSK and, and I'm okay to talk about it publicly. Like they made me take an assessment also, like a proper cognitive sort of like an assessment. Uh, right. Obviously, like it's, 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 a, it's a good company, right? So I did it. Yeah. But the pushback from smaller startups were like, hey, no, no, we just want, you know, we just want 204, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So clearly this is not for them, right? But there are a lot Correct. of companies who are done with tofu, right? Who just want quality over quantity, I think for sure. Correct, correct, correct. And a lot of times what happens is also uh, recruiters are also out of options, right? So they just want ki aray meko koi or 20 profiles la ke dega tha, I'll be happy. So mm -hmm. that is the reason because hiring manager is pushing that, okay, why are there not enough people in interview stage and so on. So that's why, that's where they post in the, those WhatsApp groups and uh, Slack and whatever communities are there 
uh, now to get more applicants basically so that that of course hits those people who are having a liquidity problem in general uh, where employer branding is not enough that you are getting enough volume you are manually head hunting and so on right so yeah yeah it's it's a it's like that problem of um, you know people uh, uh, people dying of starvation on the road i heard like the problem is not that there isn't enough food the problem is a matching of demand and supply right there is excess food which is being thrown away and not correct, being correct. matched to people who need it right uh, uh, correct, like correct, correct. there is enough talent it's just that the talent is not coming to the right job and then you have companies cribbing and crying and getting desperate that hey you know mere ko mil nahi raha hai kyu correct correct yeah glad good to see like uh, i have another you. pointer there i i was talking to one more senior sort of ta head or someone i don't remember his name but he was saying with when i i pitched this to him uh, he was saying that there are not enough quality applicants to actually reach this stage right so that was slightly towards a very macro sort of uh, that thing that there are only probably 1% 2% people who are actually at this stage that they can actually take assessments and go forward with it right and those people are the ones who don't even want to take assessments those people are like we have that. ref yeah those we have ref don't apply that's the thing that's a passive comes in Correct, 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 correct. Yeah, but yeah, multiple challenges here. I think uh, it's a hard space to solve. But then, uh, what keeps us excited is it's not solved. So we are solving it. Cool, Raj. Uh, what's uh, a very meta question for you? What's what's next for you, or or what's the way forward for Exe? Yeah, I think. Uh, multiple things uh, as i said we have three products now so uh, all of these three are having paying customers uh, screeno is something which is sitting well with the existing infra so it's slightly easier to sell uh, in terms of like the value proposition itself is solving a bigger problem so it's sort of helping there mm-hmm. uh, but yeah i think in terms of scale we want to uh, solve more problems of recruiters as you can see in all of these sort of tools none of these are like just subscribe kar lo right these are actually solving uh, recruiters time right uh, and the ats also that we have is sort of that right a lot of atss are used for bookkeeping right you will probably pay say 5000 dollars to an ats and then it's just used as a bookkeeping source that okay if the interview happened on google calendar i'll go ahead and update that okay this is an interview reject but that does not solve the problem for recruiter it probably solves the visibility problem but then a lot of recruiters tell that okay the leadership only wants me to create spreadsheets and then give the reports instead of opening the ats and then <laughs> finding those uh, sort of reports themselves right so uh, there are multiple things if they are solved in a one, one single platform it sort of uh, saves a lot of time saves a lot of uh, sort of grunt work that people are doing and yeah i think uh, solving these problems is what uh, makes us going great great uh... I have one last question, and and I ask everyone this: uh, given given that, given how much AI has permeated uh, per, permeated in our lives, uh, and right. I'm I'm pretty certain that uh, unlike other times where technology is, uh, where rather the people and HR function uh, don't keep abreast of technology, this time it's not happening. The HR and people function and people tech is keeping abreast, and I'm fairly sure that. the biggest function which is going to benefit from ai uh, is going to be hiring right is going to be recruitment um, let's say we are ideating we are brainstorming uh, where where really do you see ai really playing a pivotal part let's say this year next year uh, uh, in screening how <laughs> yeah so as we discussed right uh, screeno is actually using ai uh, if you notice i never sort of mm. push that word in my description primarily because i don't want someone to take ai just for the sake of it a lot of you would be surprised as a good ta uh, head you would be surprised and i have talked to literally 3 to 4 ta heads who are saying we are evaluating tools in the ai space this does not this is not the right thing in the industry this is not the right thing this is not the right way to actually operate as a ta head 
right you you do not go out to search for a tool in a domain 2018 se people have been saying this <laughs> 2017 yeah. se people have been saying ha ai hai kya <laughs> correct 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 so i can sprinkle ai in my landing page and get some sort of demos out of it right but go out with a problem statement saying that this is my bottleneck can this tool solve it or not right so that is where the ai will actually make sort of sense a lot of people right now writing ai in their landing pages are literally generating text out of say job description if someone wrote some <laughs> which is what chat gpt is anyways doing you are just putting a nice ui on top of it and just giving that response right uh, so those are some of the use cases which which would at some point time it would be used but then it would not be the it would not sort of bring any significant change in what recruiters are doing uh, what would sort of get replaced uh, with ai is like the redundant work right for example screening as we just saw right if mm-hmm. top company is something that ai is just giving me out of 1000 uh, resumes uh, why would i not use it this is actually solving hours of my time right so it's mm-hmm. it's exactly that that if you can find a repeatable framework which you can run and literally see it as someone else is doing at uh, doing for you at a cheaper rate right because of course if you can hire people at a cheaper rate than that then go ahead and do it but then if not probably use some tool which can do it for you and then you start focusing on bigger problems which is what every industry for example let's say uh, in recruitment let's say if screening gets solved the recruiters mm-hmm. would then move to say strategizing how to get those funnel in the first place what are the channels from which they'll get this in the first place right so uh, the problems will become bigger and bigger like in terms of the abstraction but then which is what i see i i am not sure i don't see recruiters getting replaced anytime soon as well as you mentioned it's it's a, a hard job to be replaced yeah yeah no you you're right like if if screening and and i'm with you right i also feel the screening is the bottleneck and i look at screening as matching um, okay. if matching is solved and ai can for sure play a part there uh, and i i'm fairly convinced in the next 2 to 3 years i think 2 to 3 years is too long one or two years you Correct. probably find enough repeatable data uh, to be able to let's say you took all the world's candidates and all the world's jobs i mean that's <laughs> it's done right i mean kind of what yeah, open ai did it's just up to somebody with that amount of compute and money to be able to just Correct. match all of them you'll obviously have outliers like i myself am an outlier right uh, people who sort of jumped around careers but that's fine you're not solving for for that uh, yeah i mean um, excited let's see uh, and you're right like tas are not obviously going to be replaced uh, so any ta listening in you're not for sure going to be replaced but and honestly no ta likes doing the screening also it's it's Correct. the it's everything after that that's exciting uh, i know they for a fact enjoy they love talking to the candidates uh, yeah i mean scheduling interviews is a little boring but then convincing them to join the company negotiating with them the onboarding today all of that sort of takes a back seat because uh, i know I, i i literally see four hour blocks in people's calendar why they're just screening for four damn hours like it's crazy correct uh, and that is just for one or two positions just scale it for say 50 positions that you're hiring for those, those just doesn't work you can't you know? that's where you need more manpower right so correct, correct. and and i think uh, again we a little off topic but i think the same thing is happening with uh, ta ops uh, sorry uh, people ops where you're answering repeated questions you're replying to repeated same questions again and again and again uh, where uh, the set of questions that come are honestly there's only so many set of questions that can come it's just the Correct. same thing that's been repeated again and again and uh, people have tried to use these uh, very low level ais to solve it but not that great still needs Correct. human intervention fairly fairly certainly i should be able to solve where is my pay slip <laughs> correct 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 give you all of those things uh, and there's a fundamental uh, uh, sorry sorry just to end on that there's a fundamental thing in ai uh, like since i am from a tech background i can probably enlighten your audience with this in ai it always works with an approximation almost always it cannot say this is binary this or this so that's where any platform that uses ai would have some sort of delta right for example we say that 95% of the time our tags would be accurate uh, same with your search problem with the people ops that you uh, said right that if it is solving 95% of the problems as well 
you should probably think around that is that 95% of 200 hours worth solving with that ai right and you should based on that you should evaluate on that if when you are evaluating and then you are like acha ye answer sahi nahi diya to it does not work the core fundamental how ai is built like how data scientists build uh, ai is based on these problems. for example classification right if you have if i give you 1000 candidates and classify them into say java developer or android developer and so on it it will always have a percentage of error with it that is what mm-hmm. data scientists are made uh, to optimize on but it it can never go to 100% accurate that's the core sort of ai problem that we have but then is that 99% accuracy solving a bigger problem for you then based, based on that sort of adopt these uh, practices inside right uh, but yeah i think for that, uh, for that 1% you can always have a separate workflow right uh, correct then, uh, like your case right wherever there are there's a human intervention comes in and that's keep, correct. keep that human intervention to 1% right a lot of times Again. for example support teams as well uh, have these questionnaire right so these questionnaire are also you keep on uh, answering four or five questions automatically and after sometime it will give up saying that oh i don't know where you are getting me to just talk to a human that that's the exact same problem yeah 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 and uh, i'm curious like since you're selling this do you sell uh, outside india also or it's only india Yeah, currently it's in India, but since we partnered with Greenhouse and Lever, we'll go outside as well. Uh, there we are sort of still evaluating if that is a problem there. Uh, a lot of companies that we have evaluated are not having enough applicants to solve this problem right now. They might be paying us more, but then, yeah. Uh, so it's a India problem. As I said, it's a demand supply problem. So uh, is what we have figured out right now. Of course, bigger companies would have the same problem, but then. Uh, at some point in time we'll definitely go out say yes got it no uh, where i was thinking is on the the understanding of ai probably is little bit better um, in us from what i've heard with the maturity uh, correct understand this little more so they'll not harp on that 5% delta i know we indians have a whenever we look at a tech tool we expect it to be and from given that i've come from this background like uh, we always try to uh, look at what's the flaw and Can. be like are flaw me get that point the point is there will be a slight flaw uh, look at the positives look at the time you're getting um, okay that time can be used productively in other things right 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 yeah yeah definitely cool raj uh, this was this was great this was enlightening um, for for everyone listening in uh, do you want to share where people how people can reach out to you and lexi Yeah I think email is raj@rexy.com and linkedin you can find me on linkedin with raj and rexy love to chat with uh, your audience uh, I have seen your previous podcast so uh, was very excited for this new format uh, hope this uh, continues uh, with a few more interesting products and let's see how that goes Yeah yeah thanks thanks yeah. for those words I mean, yeah that's the idea just uh, bring people tech products in the I don't know in the limelight or just to as many audiences as I can. I mean, end of the day, it's like a, it's like a net positive game to everybody, right? The more, correct, the more correct. people like you build in this space, the more, uh, you know, someone is going to crack through a great solution, and the more you unlock time, right? And correct, correct. All of this is getting back to people. That's what our function does. Cool. Yeah. Raj, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, this was this was lovely. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ranak, and uh, hope to host you in my podcast uh, when we are launching season two of Recruitment Unlock. Uh, but yeah, thanks for doing this, and uh, was great uh, chatting with you. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'll I'll come on episode one if you'll have me. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> makes sense. Sure. Right, cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye bye.